Play Haraba. Hello, my splupendous friends. That's a word that is a mix between special and stupendous. Where'd the L come from? Sploopen? Did I say sploop? Did I say sploopendous? What's the L stand for? Lovely. Special, lovely, and stupendous. Hello, my friends. It's time for another Nintendo News Roundup. Um, basically, since this show's inception, every week, I'm waiting for the next week to be the one that doesn't have enough news stories. And it's January. Things are slow. No, there's a million. There's a million. Every week, there's a million. <laughs> I have too many news stories here, so let's dive on in and get through them. Big news story of the week, Nintendo is officially purchasing next level games. Uh, up until now, they've been a, uh, you know, second, third party developer, technically separate from Nintendo, but making a lot of exclusive Nintendo games. But now they're doing it. They are gonna be a fully, officially first party Nintendo uh, company. I won't go into great detail. If you want my further opinions on this, I made a whole video about it. Go check it out if you feel like it, but basically, uh, it's cool. Next level, they made Luigi's Mansion 3 and a bunch of other really cool games, so it's really neat to see them. Uh, they'll be getting resources from Nintendo, so maybe that will help them grow and, and put out more games and all that stuff, and so that's really cool. So this is disappointing. Apparently a great number of DSiWare games have been removed from the 3DS eShop. Um, it's only natural for, I don't know, I mean, I guess not. As long as the 3DS services are up, I don't know why they would pull down any games that were there. I know DSi games are older than 3DS games. I don't know if they just want to wrap up that, that chapter of the DS's history or something. I'm not really sure. Um, though making matters even weirder, uh, some of the games came back. Not all of them, but like a, like a little list of them came back after they were unceremoniously ripped down, couple put back up. So it's weird, we don't really know. I mean, like, you would hope that Nintendo would at least warn people about this before they're gonna take them all down. So at this point, it's not really clear what Nintendo's exact plan is here, but um, I don't know, if you wanna get some DSiWare games, if there's any left, now's the time, I guess. Netflix is pulling support for 3DS and Wii U. It seems that uh, as of the turn of the year, you're no longer able to, uh, a new customer, or a, you know, a new 3DS or Wii U owner, no longer able to download the app. Uh, and then in June, the service will be shut down permanently, which is probably a bummer for anybody still using those devices as a regular Netflix thing. But as with all things, I suppose it's inevitable. Here's a really great little story that just barely missed the cutoff for last week's roundup. Um, apparently, when creating NPCs in Breath of the Wild, Nintendo used a version of the Me editor. People have, have seen that apparently a lot of these NPCs are based on Miis. Nintendo used that software or a version of it to construct their faces. Um, and uh, some people have pointed out, this has apparently been known for a while now with like hackers and stuff, I guess just not as widely known. And it makes a lot of sense. I, I did think that NPCs in Breath of the Wild often looked pretty weird. Just, just kind of weird, kind of off. So I don't know, I guess this uh, makes sense now. I mean, it's a really interesting cost saving measure that I'm not even sure if I would have ever thought of. Uh, and so now of course uh, the idea is that because now we all know this, you could potentially put Mies into Breath of the Wild. If you're modding Breath of the Wild, you could put <laughs> whatever Mies you want in there. And I've actually seen some people pointing out, this is a great thing that I wish I had thought of myself, but I guess I'm not smart enough. Um, the, you know, Breath of the Wild was on the Wii U. There's a chance that there was originally gonna be some sort of me integration. So that means that like people could have potentially had their friends' Miis show up as NPCs in Breath of the Wild. I think that's really, really cool. It's a cool idea. And maybe they uh, maybe they scrapped it for some reason. Maybe they scrapped it because it was going to Switch and the Switch wouldn't necessarily have the same, like, it, you know, no Miiverse, the same functionality. And so they just didn't do it. But I think that's, it's really, really interesting. I would have loved to see uh, how that would have turned out. Pokemon Go is having a contest where you can kind of design your own little avatar with your name and the Pokemon that you're using, and you can submit these, and uh, eight people, eight winners of this contest will get to have their avatars in a special Pokemon Go event for people to fight, which I think is uh, pretty cool. I would make a whole joke about how like, oh, maybe there should be an Arlo in the game. I did that on Twitter though, this is already. Already not a good joke, and I already told it, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> in other Pokemon news, uh, in Japan, there's a, a popsicle ice cream, like, manufacturer who's having a contest uh, where you could win a special edition Zarude, Z Z Zarude, I don't know how to pronounce it, card by, uh, get, you know, you get, like, a special little thing on your popsicle stick that tells you you won, and uh, apparently, apparently a man, uh, 
forged a bunch of these so that he could get a bunch of these cards and, you know, sell them, because apparently they sell for a bunch of money. So, um, this, I suppose, counts as fraud. So he actually went to jail for this. He went to jail for forging popsicle sticks so he could get some Pokemon cards. Interesting. That's just, that's a good one. That's a good news roundup story right there. Just interesting. Apparently they, they grew suspicious when he was just submitting so many. Uh, he would have had to have eaten around 6,000 popsicles in order to get the, the number that he did. So yeah, that that is pretty suspicious. I can understand that. As always, Switch is passing sales milestones. It's always passing whichever Nintendo console. It's on its way to the top. And uh, most recently, it's passed the 3DS in a, uh, you know, 3DS is what, just about 10 years old now? and the Switch is like four years old, and it's already passed it with a lot of momentum. It is definitely working its way up to the top. I don't believe it's gonna get up to DS numbers, but it is almost certainly going to pass the Wii. I know I say this a lot, but I still can't get over how weird this is because it just like when I started my channel and there was just such a long period of time where Nintendo was just struggling so much, they were not super duper relevant. They weren't being talked about a lot. So this next story, seeing uh, Amazon's top 10, like highest selling games on Amazon, it's almost all Nintendo games. Animal Crossing number one, obviously, but then Mario Kart and Super Mario, and even like Breath of the Wild is on there. Age of Calamity, that's actually really surprising. Did not know it would do that well. And that's just really, really interesting. Um, this isn't exactly like a good, uh, a good way to see how much a game sold overall because uh, digital sales are gonna tell a different story from, you know, physical sales on Amazon. This is just one retailer. Yeah, just one retailer and just physical copies. But it's still like, obviously, it's Amazon. They're huge. They're this is really, it's really, really, really impressive. Apparently in the UK last year, the Switch sold more than every other console combined, which is a thing, really a thing. Um, traditionally, the UK has been pretty dominated by Sony. And um, like, I mean, you can, it's, you can definitely see how like, People weren't buying PS4s as much because they wanted PS5s, but they couldn't buy PS5s because there weren't a lot of PS5s to go around. We're probably gonna see a very different story, uh, you know, this year. But again, that's still really, really, really impressive. In fact, video game revenue in the UK, uh, for the first time ever, passed four billion pounds in 2020. And obviously very much thanks to, I mean, many games, but Animal Crossing was really, really high up there. And because of that, the news goes into the roundup, <laughs> the Nintendo news roundup, and we all go yippee skippy, good for Nintendo. Gameindustry.biz has gathered up a number of different analysts' opinions on uh, what Nintendo's gonna do this year. They don't entirely agree on everything though they do you know most of them seem to think that there will be some sort of new you know switch pro whatever hardware revision model this year of course these are analysts so we have to take everything they say with a pretty hefty grain of salt because they are literally just guessing and they usually have a pretty pretty spotty track records but i also do think there probably will be a revision this year anyway. People do like to mention the whole 4K thing, which as I've said in the past, I'm, I'm really skeptical that it's gonna be like true native 4K, uh, but there could be some sort of upscaling, something or other, I, something. And, and in fact, um, recently, a hacker and data miner by the name, I can never pronounce the name, people's handles when they're like do hacky stuff, see, Skyries, um, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> this person has done a lot of sifting through firmware code and um, it seems that they have a little bit more of an idea of what a hardware revision might be, but it's still, it's, it's very vague and it's still a lot of, uh, a lot of speculation. So I don't know if you're really, really interested in this stuff, you can kind of read the little write up here that Nintendo Life has, a little, little collection of what they think. Um, but it, it's a lot of vague stuff. It's like, eh, maybe 4K, maybe kind of 4K, maybe better battery or better cooling or something. I don't know, if, if you're super interested in all these rumors, it's worth checking out, but there's nothing like really, really solid there. And it is a whole lot of speculation. Seems that people have discovered a glitch with Sephiroth uh, if, if he uses his uh, his side special on Pokemon Trainer and knocks out a Pokemon at like just the right time, it kind of breaks the game uh, so that other characters, like any like effects, like visual effects on their moves just don't they just don't happen, they all just go away. And uh, there's a nice little video here of uh, showing off like how Final Smashes just don't, <laughs> just don't have any effects uh, at all. And uh, I do think it's pretty funny that Sephiroth, he's just this like world destroying guy. And so he's, he's already kind of <laughs> breaking things and 
And uh, obviously they'll be patching this very, very quickly, but it's at least a little bit funny to see for the time being. Monster Hunter Rise recently got its own little uh, digital event, basically like a Monster Hunter Direct, which is what I said would happen, but it wasn't specifically a Direct, but it was, I don't know, the same basic thing. We expected it, you know, just uh, info dump. So if you want more info on Monster Hunter Rise and you <laughs> somehow missed that, go check it out. You know what? You know what's funny? Real quick aside, I played a demo for a Monster Hunter game a few years ago and I thought I just thought it was terrible. I couldn't get a hold of the controls. I didn't know what I was doing. But like since then, I've played Dark Souls, and I kind of get that kind of slower, more methodical combat now. And uh, all that to say, I'm looking at that Rise demo. I'm thinking I don't know. I don't know if I have time to get into a series this just big and deep and grand. But I'm looking at that demo. It's looking pretty cool. A programmer going by Gizaha has been reverse engineering Street Fighter Alpha 2 on the Super NES, and uh, apparently they have discovered a brand new cheat that nobody knew about before. And uh, not a glitch, a cheat, like a thing programmed into the game that just nobody discovered and nobody knew about. You do this pretty crazy thing and you, you sit with the title screen, you hold down these exact certain buttons and you gotta enter a new code or whatever. And uh, basically it lets you, I don't know anything about this game. I've never, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know these characters, uh, but it lets you play as Shin Akuma, which is, uh, I don't know, that's cool. It's like a 25 year old game. Someone discovered a new cheat all this time later. That's cool. The New York Game Awards, not to be confused with the other game awards hosted by Jeff Keighley and all that. Um, those are coming up. Uh, Reggie fils is actually gonna be hosting and Animal Crossing, just like with the other Game Awards, has been nominated for Game of the Year, along with an almost identical list of nominees. And um, I don't know how that will go. I don't know what the results of that will be. I don't know anything about the New York Game Awards. But uh, you got Reggie, you got Animal Crossing, Nintendo News, it's in the roundup. So obviously in recent years, Nintendo has really, uh, really reeled back on the, the physical rewards that they offer on their website in exchange for all the points and stuff. They don't do as much anymore. They've kind of been dabbling in it a little bit more recently. Um, but even then, even when you want to get something on there with your points, it's like impossible because they go out of stock and everything. Um, so a Reddit user by the name of Root Bear has created a little uh, tracker system that uh, checks with their with the website and lets you know whenever there's been a restock or anything. It's kind of like a good version of all of those horrible scalper bots that have been buying up the systems. It's like a this is one that was like made for good, <laughs> created for people to actually use it. I, I technically someone a scalper could use it for evil, I suppose, but. But uh, I don't know if this is something that could help anybody ever. I certainly hope that it does because I, I know the pain of trying to get some sort of limited edition thing that Nintendo just chooses not to create enough of to meet demand. Could go on about that, couldn't I? The official Super Nintendo World website is now live and it gives us even more details about the park, including uh, ticket pricing. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. There's some more like ride details. Apparently the main rides take about five minutes to do. Just lots of little stuff, you know, just add it to the pile of little tiny details. We've been learning about the park. Apparently when Nintendo put up the official Super Nintendo World website, um, they used a render of Mario that was actually created by Twitter user Ujidao. And uh, this render is very, very similar to an official one with Mario that it seems they probably just got it mixed up. Um, it is weird though, just because like you wouldn't have those assets like on you, on your person in a folder somewhere. Are they like going on Google images to find these and they saw this and just kind of assumed those are the right ones? So I don't know, it's a little bit weird. I don't know if they're gonna update it or if they're like, whatever, you did a render of Mario and we own Mario, so who cares? <laughs> I'm not really sure. Very, very slight differences in these two renders, but I do think that's a little interesting. Bandai Skokugan is creating a, uh, a collection of Animal Crossing figures. Um, these are these are pretty cool. They're, they're flocked, so you know, it's like that kind of, the little, the kind of fuzziness on them. It feels pretty cool. Um, these figures look really, really, really excellent. They come in a bundle. I suppose you have to buy them all. They retail for uh, $47.95. They're pretty cool. They are a little bit small, and I do kind of wish there was more variety in the uh, villagers. Cause you have a couple like, you know, a couple mains or whatever, you know, Isabel, Tom Nook and, and all that. But then there's just like a, just kind of a handful of just other ones. And uh, I don't know, I, I, it would be fun if there was more variety. You kind of just have to buy them all. You can't just buy the ones that you want, um, but they do seem to be very high quality figures. They're really cute. I'm actually looking at this. This I don't, I, I, I think Flick and Tom Nook. 
Those are the two that I really want out of this. I don't care as much about the others. I do like those though. So recently, Nintendo strolled on over to Game Jolt, which is a game hosting service and issued a mass, mass DMCA takedown of 379 different fan games. And, uh, you know, I mean, this is understandable. It's, I, I don't want it to become another one of those things where it's like, ah, oh, Nintendo taking down fan projects again. The thing is, the, the website is monetizing these games by uh, having advertisements. Somebody is benefiting monetarily from these games being created and shared with people. And so it's another one of those situations where I can completely understand Nintendo's viewpoint and even think it probably is pretty wise to protect their copyrights, at least in this case, when someone is profiting off of them. Um, I'm un it's unclear if they're gonna be able to re-upload these just somewhere else or without ads or something. I mean, I don't know, you know Nintendo, they don't like fan games at all in any circumstances, so I don't really know what the exact fates of these games are, but wow, 379, just all at the same time, just yanked them all down, so that's a thing. So according to a recent article from Bloomberg, uh, apparently in the very early days of the Xbox, when Microsoft was just first wanting to get into the console scene, they went around to a lot of different companies, like a ton of them, Square and EA and Nintendo and just all sorts, basically saying, hey, like, we wanna make your systems, you know? Like, e even people who had no interest in hardware, they're like, we know how to do hardware and we wanna do it for you. And so at one point, apparently, they went to Nintendo and said, hey, look, your hardware kind of stinks. You know, this was after the N64, you know, like you need to up your game. You guys make the games, we'll do the hardware. It'll be great. And apparently the Nintendo executives just laughed in their faces. Just, la just laughed them right out of the room. So that's a, it's a very interesting little piece of history that I was uh, not aware of. I didn't know Microsoft was that interested in trying to get, trying to partner up with somebody and, uh, and then they went on to just be like, okay, fine, I guess no one wants to, we'll make our own. And um, it, is, it, is, it is very funny, Nintendo's tendency to create their own rivals. This, this that happened with uh, PlayStation. Hey, let's work together. No, we don't wanna work together. Okay, we'll just make our own and completely rival you. So uh, yeah, they've done that a good number of times, haven't they? They're pretty, uh, pretty good at that. So here are two very, very sad pieces of news. Um, Brian Cooper, who ran the website Japanese Nintendo, has passed away. I don't know anything about the man. I also didn't really know a lot about, I heard about Japanese Nintendo. It seems that it was just uh, kind of on the forefront of, uh, of uh, bringing Japanese, you know, Nintendo information to us and, and translations and everything that's going on in Japan. And uh, he was the head of that and, and he passed away. It's, that's really, really sad. And then also Brad uh, Venable or Venable passed away too. Uh, he voiced a few characters in Fire Emblem Three Houses and he's also done a lot of other uh, just video game work. And um, no, uh, no cause of death was given, but that's incredibly, incredibly sad. He, he was still pretty young. So very, really disappointing to hear about uh, both of these. Um, you know, I, I obviously, what can I even say? Condolences to family and loved ones and all that stuff. Um, I'm sure they will really be missed. So quite a while ago, I reported that there was going to be a, uh, a book uh, getting published called Ask a Wada, which uh, just sort of gathers up all of his, uh, just a lot of his like his writings and his quotes and you know, his, his wisdom and all that stuff. And uh, apparently now officially it is finally coming to the West. It is getting localized and uh, it'll be available in April. So that's cool. I kind of want to, I'm probably going to buy that. That's pretty cool. Especially after doing uh, the video I did on him sometime back, you know, last year, uh, I've become a lot more interested in just him as a man and, you know, in his career and everything. So if there's anything new to glean from this book, I, uh, it's pretty cool. Developer Indie Cube is hiring. Indie Cube is best known for Mario Party games. Uh, they pretty much are just the Mario Party people now. Um, so it's hard for me to believe that they're not hiring for a new Mario Party. It's certainly possible. They've, they've done a few other projects over the years. They did like Animal Crossing, Amiibo Festival, <laughs> and, a, and a couple others, but it, it does seem most likely it's for Mario Party. Um, I'm actually surprised we haven't gotten another Mario Party already. It could be Nintendo just wants to kind of do two for this, uh, this generation instead of pumping them out every year or whatever because they just have one system now. They don't want to overload us. And um, Super Mario Party is still selling incredibly, just incredibly, just series record-breakingly well. So this could mean that we have another Mario Party coming on the horizon. Could be this year. Could be hiring for finish-up stuff. Could be next year. Could be years from now. Who knows? Just have to wait and see. And finally, look at this Gengar bed. Look at this Gengar bed. 
this is incredible. Look at this. You, his tongue, he like rolls it all up and you can like lay on it like a mat. You can put your head in his mouth. It's incredible. I actually really, really, I've always really liked Gengar. Um, I love that whole evolutionary line a whole lot, uh, but then uh, my friend uh, Justin Silverman, he works on Cinemassacre, he's probably got the biggest Gengar collection in the world, very possibly. I'm not really sure, I'll have to ask him. Is he gonna get annoyed that I called him a friend? He's like, whoa, 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 we're not, <laughs> we're not close personal friends. Well, he's a cool guy. I've hung out with him on a number of occasions, at cons and stuff. Really cool guy, works on Cinemassacre. We did the video together. We did the rental reviews with the with the with the Kermit Swamp ears. It was great. Point is, his enthusiasm and love for Gengar has really—it's infectious. It's really been rubbing off on me. So I find myself like more and more appreciating the Pokemon. I saw this bed. Obviously, he was freaking out over trying to get it. Um, I just think it's really cool. I really do like Gengar. Look at this bed. It's so cool. It's his tongue. Oh, I don't know. I don't even know what else to say. It's just so neat. And that is it for the Nintendo News Roundup this week. I told you, there's just a bunch. There's just so many stories. I, I had to delete some. I deleted some of the less interesting ones. So just gotta whittle it down a little bit. News happens a lot, all the time. Um, let me know what you think about every single individual one of these news items. Give me a S short form essay for every single one down in the comments, and I will catch you later. You, what did I call you? Sploop, sploopendous, sploop, I don't remember. You're great though, bye.